let me just say a couple things. First of all, uh, I don't have any socks on, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, that's the new look. You've got, yeah, I've got a colored one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's terrific to see uh, that everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, because um, that's a sea change, in, in my opinion, in Sydney. Uh, I, you know, I've been here 15 years, um, and before that, uh, I was in California for many years, in Silicon Valley and Los Angeles. And over the last five years, I've seen a gigantic sea change, and when a lot of kids like yourself come out of school, they want to be entrepreneurs rather than get a job, and that's fantastic, because that's what I've done all my life. I could never, I was an employee once for a big company, but, you know, got kicked out because I sort of didn't fit in. Um, so, Bart asked me to uh, talk about a couple of things. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So, I've been an entrepreneur uh, three times. I've had three companies, uh, two successful, one a complete failure. And 99% uh, of what I learned is from my own failures. So I'm going to tell you about my own failures and, and what I've learned. Maybe you can not repeat what I did. So one of, the, one of the first things I would tell you is if you're going to start a business, start something that solves a real problem, not a fake problem. And start something where the problem is as painful as you can possibly see. So the, the buzzword that I like to use is start something where you solve appendicitis. Uh, if somebody's got appendicitis, that means they've got to get it out now or they're going to die. And that's the kind of problem you should look for. It's something that is really painful to the patient uh, because you don't want to you know, treat a headache, you want to treat appendicitis. That's what your solution should be. The second thing I would say is, um, is do something that you're really passionate about. Too many of us in life sort of go through life and sort of go to work and we do it, we make some money, uh, but we're not really passionate about what we want to do. And then you end up you know, my age and you think, shit, I should have done something a lot more fun. So I would say if you can pick something that you're really passionate about from your age forward, I would do that and nothing else. And the money will come if you do a good job. And everybody notices if you really are passionate about something, it makes a gigantic difference in your life, and it makes a gigantic difference in your performance in life. So I would do that. The other thing too is, is you're gonna is you're gonna work in teams. Um, you know, very rarely does one entrepreneur uh, build a gigantic business. So it's, it's usually two or three people that start out. It may sometimes four in, in building a business. And the, one, the thing you want to do when you start off with, um, with a team is you want to make sure that you like each other. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times uh, uh, businesses fail, and there's a, one, one of the major reasons why businesses fail, and it's not talked about a lot, but it's founders fight. They just don't like each other. I mean, they, they get together, and after a while, they're like, you know, I don't really like you. Um, and, and, uh, and, and it fails. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the human experience. Uh, you know, you can't like everybody. So what I would think, one of my mentors told me many years ago, he said, when you start a business, he said, you know, they're gonna, you're going to work your guts out for years and years. And you've got to make sure that you can work with people through thick and thin. Especially the thin, because the thick is real easy. Uh, so I would, I would make sure that you like who you work with. Uh, and then you can get along, and, and they pass what's called the alley duck test. Does everybody, did Bart tell you what that is? You know what the alley duck test is? So here's the alley duck test. So make sure they, that each of you passes this with each other. The alley duck test is you work, um, you, you know, you've worked uh, Monday through Saturday for 12 hours a day. It's Sunday, you're taking the day off. You're walking down the street in Surrey Hills. You see your, your business partner walking towards you, and you have this moment, and you think, oh, do I duck in the alley so he doesn't see me? <laughs> or do I have a beer with them? Okay, so if you can't have a beer with them, if you want to duck at the alley, then not the right part. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and the other thing is, I think it's great what, uh, that what, what Bart said is uh, send you guys out to, uh, to um, fail. Uh, failure is a great thing. Um, I, I never understood when I first moved here, uh, people who failed in business where had like a scarlet letter, a big X that they uh, had on their forehead that they walked around with. I never really understood that because I didn't grow up in that culture. Um, but, um, you know, in Australia, you have a great example of failure that works every day. Uh, but not a lot, and, and people accept it, but not a lot of people really think about it. And that is, uh, this is a mad keen sports, sports uh, country. And, uh, you know, if, you, if your sports team loses a, loses a game, you don't hate them. Uh, you, you wish it won. But you give another chance, and the season goes on and on and on. Finally, they end up winning. So failure is how you learn. At, at, uh, at 3M, uh, they have... Um, they have this thing called the Big Jerk Theory of Sales. Does everybody know what that is? No? Who likes selling? Okay, I should, you should just have a lot more hands because if you're going to start a company, you've got to be the best salesman in the company. The CEO does, right? Everybody does. So get used to it. 
Um, so the big jerk theory of sales is this. When you go out selling, right, you pick, you pick the biggest jerk that you know who is never going to buy your product, ever. And that's the first guy you're trying to sell to. Do you know why? Because he's going to tell you everything that's wrong with your product. Everything. He's going to tell you what's wrong with you. He's going to tell you why he hates you, why he hates your product. He's going to tell you, tell you everything about that. And then, you know what, you're going to know exactly what to do. So the next guy you talk to, you, you already have the objections, and you know what the questions are. And you just keep going. And you're going to fail, and they teach you at 3M as you sell, they teach you that the first, hundred, the first 99 people you try and sell to, you're going to fail. But that's a good thing, because you're getting closer and closer to the success. So I would say accept, embrace failure, and go with it. So be passionate. Work with people you want, want to um, find a real problem, and, and have a lot of fun. And uh, that's me.